Hi, I'm Tom Travarella. I am with Frontiers, and I will not stand between us and lunch. Open access publishers get uh, called a lot of things. We're not literally going to starve you, I promise. Uh, <laughs> I have to thank Melinda for doing my introduction for me. Uh, Henry and C Camilla are on a mission to make all science open, all of it. That is their social purpose as a business, our social purpose as a business. That is our endpoint. Make science open for healthy lives on a healthy planet. A big part of that strategy is going to be to work with society publishers. Uh, we had a big year last year. And just to clarify, I'm not with the society team. They could not be here today. So this is all work they have done. I'm happy to connect you with anybody on the team if you want to ask specifics about what they are working on. But this is just an overview of the successes that they had last year. Uh, societies do amazing work, and we want to help them with that. We've been partnering with societies since 2019. Uh, and using the gold open access model, we have made over 16,000 articles fully open access. Uh, if you're a publisher that's ever tried to work with a society, you have given this pitch. If you're a society who has tried to partner, you have heard this pitch. So I'm going to move on from this slide. <laughs> Big reason why people want to work with us, though, is that we are very technology forward. You know, We have a lot of platforms at a society's disposal that are going to help them change not just the publications themselves, but the look of the journal, the website, how it operates. You know, sometimes that's just seen as the window dressing, but it can really determine who wants to publish in a journal or not. Uh, we, we know specifically, you know, the things that are going on inside of the societies. Sometimes the membership is stagnant or the dues are stagnant. Sometimes they would make their money off of the conferences. The, you know, that, you know, it's wonderful they're all here, but conferences still haven't come back in a full way. So they're looking for different ways to make money. Uh, the case study I'm here to present is from a journal in Hungary that we wanted to work with, and this is a quote from their editor-in-chief talking about that they were motivated, but they didn't want to grow too much. There was this concern that our, if we partner with you, are you going to make us grow too much? Are you going to make us publish things we don't want to publish? Are we going to have to deal with things that, as a staff, or even with the help of Frontiers, we're not equipped to handle? So they were concerned about the floodgates opening up. The big thing that we did with our model with societies is that we opened up the floodgates only as much as they wanted them opened, and we diverted everything else. So this journal, as you can see here, the editor-in-chief saying, the submissions, in the, um, the publications increased 76%. That's what they wanted. If we're working with a society that wants less than that, we can do that. But also, there was citations that increased, which was also important for all of us, certainly. Uh, but also, geographic diversity of the submissions was improved. So it was not just a floodgate opening, it was a floodgate of the kind they wanted. They wanted more from Hungary, where they're based. They wanted more from Switzerland, from the US. We were able to help them with that. We were able to make that happen. Now, for all of the things that didn't fit with what they wanted, how much they wanted to grow, where did they want to grow it from, they still had a lot of content. I mean, I don't think I'm giving away anything by saying that, as publishers, the holy grail is to be able to make money off of every paper we have to touch, even if we don't publish it. Or, at the very minimum, to lose less money for the fact that we have to touch all of these papers and we don't get to publish them. So what we're doing with societies is creating a transfer portal where, using the societies flip to open, using the society's newfound interest and citation activity and being known for being open, using that as a venue to get additional papers into other journals inside of Frontiers as well. So if a submission comes to the, the partner journal, the society journal, they get right of first refusal. If they want it and it goes through all of the processes that it should, they can publish it. If they don't need it or don't want it, we keep it inside of the Frontiers ecosystem. And it still goes through all of the processes that it would have to before it went into a Frontiers journal. But at the end of the line, the society, in essence working as an agent, is going to get a piece of the APC from the publication of that paper, even though it's not in their journal. So we're helping the society find a means of revenue that they didn't have before because their good reputation, their good name, their new benefits of open access are drawing attention that they didn't have before. 
Again, a slide that all of us have seen. We all know why the society should consider this what they have to think of. So with that in mind, and with uh, four other people who gave some great talks, I will open up the floor to questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.